Liverpool, uh, it sort of feels like we're approaching the point at which it is my job to say, are we supposed to talk about Jurgen Klopp? I don't, for the record, hey, hey, for the record, I love that guy and I don't think we should do that. But it does feel like it's uh, the appropriate time for me to start suggesting that maybe that's a... Uh, well, this, I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit before, but basically uh, all teams, you know, go through like cycles and the team tends to be about a three year cycle and Guardiola has managed to keep his team fresh and everything by bringing new players in and, and changing it. And Alex Ferguson used to do that where you would, um, after a, a bit of success, he would start to break up the team on purpose, just hack it to bits. Um, so it becomes something new and you, you retain these, uh, you retain the intensity and the attention to detail that you need. And what Klopp's spoken about recently is the problems they've had. I mean, there's loads and loads of problems. They're all basically defensive, which is caused by not putting enough pressure higher up the pitch. They're pressing far less than the attacking third. In fact, the numbers, uh, last time I saw it, they were, last season they were first or something like that, very close to first in like attacking pressures. So attack, pressures in the attacking third. So, you know, so they're winning the ball very high up the pitch or they're playing pressure very high up the pitch. This season, it's a marked difference around about mid-table. And that's enormous, which means that inevitably you get more um, attention on on the back, the back line. And then uh, without wanting to pick and Trent, Trent Alexander-Arnold, like he is being exploited every single time he plays. The first goal, it, sure enough, it's Joe Gomez. Like he doesn't look up before he hits the pass. I think it's an accident and it could, it's so easy for this to happen, just not looking up. But you know where, roughly where your teammates are. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, what happens is that uh, Leeds go from back to front very quickly down the left wing. Um Alexander Arnold steps forward to try and press the, the left winger, but I think that's a d- deliberate decoy to then bring him out of position so that Joe Gomez has to then cover the right back position, which has been happening all season long. It creates a big gap between the right centre back and the left centre back. And so Alexander Arnold's taken out the late game a little bit. Shouldn't matter because Gomez has control of the situation and then passes back across his own goal from the base near the touchline, the, the throw in line, and, a, and it catches out the goalkeeper. And that's how the, uh, Rodrigo scores. It's a, it's a real mistake. And Klopp says that's just an accident. You can't. Um, allow for that but that's a mistake caused by Gomez's error but it's also um, tactical and teams keep doing this thing so like if you uh, pull the right back wide and out of position like Alexander does as an Arnold does then the inside midfielder the left inside midfielder can then run into that space that's left go out wide so you've rotated and then they've got they can create things and it was just a mistake that caused them that one but you go back through all these other games against Napoli when they got done 4-1 I think it was 4-1 wasn't it 4-1 yeah. 4-1 um Napoli always focused on the left side. Same thing, Kravatskilia was would be taking them on. It was always Gomez 1v1 with him and Alexander Arnold's the right back it's because they're pulling them out of position with other things. It's quite clever what other teams are doing now. But as Klopp has said and Pep Linders has said, everyone knows how Liverpool play. They figured it out long ago. Everyone knows it, but they, were able to, they weren't able to stop it before because they were so intense and they were so good that teams could go through them. Uh, sorry, that Liverpool just go, keep going through them. They win the ball high up the pitch and it becomes like incredibly difficult to play against. Because you just know they're going to come at you. Like Watford beat them once, I think, and they just they made it like a back six or seven to block out all the wide space, limit them to through the middle, and they hit them on the counter. Was it Aston Villa once did them like seven nil or some, some weird result? Yeah, seven two or seven, seven two in the result. COVID season. Like it, it can happen. These sorts of things. It's kind of random, um, but I think one thing you could say is that losing Sadio Mane makes a bit of a difference. It's maybe just to the eye test, but he would often. Pick and choose when to press, but his, t- his sense of timing of it was perfect. In the same way that Firmino, his sense of timing of when to attack space and when to drop into space is like he, in, he's incredible at doing it. So now they change their system to be more of like a four four two diamond, um, which defends sort of like a front three from the very front. But they're letting people pass to either side. Nunes is not as good at pressing as you maybe want him to be just yet. He's not Manny um, and Salah. Uh, it still lets people down that right hand side and you've got Harvey Elliott behind him as the right side of midfielder so Elliott when you look at his profile in FB ref um, in case anyone's not sure exactly how he plays he's a very progressive ball player but you can carry the ball he's really neat and tidy they compare him in the top like list of players uh, a lot like him Pedri oh <laughs> he's one that comes up a couple of other players um, they, they make him similar to like Dominic Sobozlai, like a really talented Hungarian player. Uh, also Martin Odegaard, also Stuart Armstrong, weirdly. But not George Henderson. That one. A really talented Scottish player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, For yeah. people yeah. who don't know that's... Uh, I don't know how Armstrong get in there. But basically, Elliot is not as good, I think we've covered this before, he's not as good at covering the right space as Henderson has been in the past. So what Liverpool struggle with again, as Klopp has talked to a lot, is injuries. 
So they've had loads of injuries and players not fit. And because of injuries, he's had to play players who aren't quite fit, which then means that they're playing too much in a position they shouldn't be doing. And then it means that they are susceptible to injuries as well. And there's a knock-on effect back down. Also, Van Dijk has been absolutely useless this season. He's one of the best centre-backs I've ever seen. And he's doing weird things. The second goal that they concede... Uh, which is the one that Klopp said that can't happen. You can see Match of the Day did a really good job in it. Like, I love, love their analysis and Match of the Day 2 especially as well. Like, he should be much tighter instantly to where the, the, the lad that scores is. But he keeps standing off everyone, like giving them like two or three yards. I don't know why. Well, let me ask you this. He's a different player than yeah. what he was. Well, let me ago. ask you this then, JJ. I mean, like, we, so we've covered a lot of these issues before. Um, they seem to be the, they seem to be consistent uh, throughout the season so far. It's difficult to note areas that are improving, um, and yet there sort of remains this expectation at some point that Liverpool will just snap back into it. Steve Hankey makes the the valid point uh, that uh, Liverpool currently mid table. You know, I mean, forget about challenging for the title. At, at what point in the season, presumably it's the halfway point, do the club start to think, well, we need to target top four? Uh, because we need Champions League football. There, there is a scenario where if Liverpool do not improve in the way that they're expected to, that they don't finish in the top four. Yeah, but I can't see a world really get rid of Klopp in that because you know that he knows how to turn it into a winning team. Like He's not going to lose the dressing room. They all, they all know exactly how good he is. It's individual error caused by tactical problems with the Alexander Arnold thing is really complicated to deal with. He's clearly a great man manager. Uh, his recru- recruitment has been excellent, whether that's all him or whether that's to do with um, uh, other people in the club that brought him in. I don't know exactly the answer to that one. But you keep Klopp in because he can get you to that next level. It's just at the end of a cycle. They'll build a new team now. Maybe the recruitment they've got in isn't exactly what they needed it to be. They've had loads of injury problems. A lot of this, I mean, Liverpool fans might get wound up with it, but you just need to give them time and it, there'll be a reset at halfway. Yeah, after, after the it, World it, Cup, when, that's the thing, isn't it? When it went wrong from at Borussia Dortmund, when it all went wrong, uh, please correct me if I'm very wrong here, but I think there was a winter break, and after the winter break, they were much better. Yeah, they they made a big thing of that winter break, if I remember correctly. The winter pause, they, John. In that season. Yes, that's right. They, they, I think they, they sort of used it as a point where they're like, if we can get to this point, then everything will be fine. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah. listen, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you look around the league, though, like I think this is really relevant, and I think it will only emerge in time. Antonio Conte at Spurs has talked about how there are periods of games where he feels his side can't compete in the way that he wants them to tactically. They have to kind of sit, restrict chances, and then dominate physically in the last half an hour. Klopp talked about this at the beginning of the season about Mm. conserving energy and managing the conditioning of players. Like, I know it's a really tough sell and I, I don't, um, I don't expect people to kind of, um, I don't expect people not to respond to poor results, especially losing to Leeds at home. The reality is that once the World Cup's over and once we're able to see this this season in isolation for what it actually is and the challenges that that it encompasses, I think that contextualizes the things in a, in a really yeah. interesting way because you just, no manager has ever had to do this before. Like even previously, if you think about kind of the summer break, you think about um, how regularly the Champions League games have to come, how little coaching time there actually is during the season, that's a really big thing, especially if you've got new players. Like if you're trying to not just work on set pieces, but team shape and like the kind of basics of, you know, positional play. Or if you're trying to, if you're trying to embed a Darwin Nunez into the team and you've only got what, two days between games each week, it's incredibly difficult to do. Yeah. Um, and once we get to March and April and if these things are still happening, then okay, sure, it's a conversation, but I, I feel like it's a little bit of a tricky one to, to, to judge people for that right now. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.